Hey, good afternoon, guys. Michael Wynn, Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. And I'm here today with Katie Lilly of Lilyfield Accounting Solutions. And today is our first episode. We're kicking off the review of Traction, a fantastic book uh, <laughs> by Gino Wickman, uh, best selling author and um, uh, founder of the EOS system, which is the Entrepreneur Operating System. So, so today we're kicking it off and we're talking about why did we decide to do this? So I'm going to let you go first since you were the one that introduced it to me and then I'll talk about okay. why. Okay. So how did we get here? So I was looking for something um, that would help me with balance. Uh, balancing personal life, work life, and helping me um, with um, a firm that's growing really fast in a short period of time, and there's just not enough time in the day to do everything. And so I, what caught my eye was a podcast about calendar blocking, and I was like, oh, clearly I need to calendar block, and that will solve all my problems. So I listened to this podcast about that, and within that podcast, he, this gentleman kept referring to EOS. And then finally the interviewer was like, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you, what is EOS? And I was like, thank <laughs> you. And so then he goes, the whole second half of the podcast was about this book and the entrepreneurial operating system. And I was like, I think this is what I need. <laughs> <laughs> Forget calendar blocking, I need this book. And so I happened to be on a trip to Jacksonville with my daughter at the time. So when I stopped for gas, I downloaded the book in Audible and I listened to the book and I was so excited about it. Mm. I just couldn't get back. I couldn't wait to get back to the office on Monday and, and you know read through it, let my team know about it and just start working the process. And so I think that's when I ran into you at the coffee maker that morning. <laughs> Conversations over coffee. <laughs> and was telling you how excited I was about it. And I was like, we should do this together. And then I was like, we should just meet in the conference room and do like lunch book club. And then that's when we were like, we should do it as a podcast. So that's kind of where I was. So it's just for me, it is we've grown so fast as a firm, mm -hmm. which, which is fantastic. Good problem to have. It's a right. great problem to have. It's just, um, it's, it's, okay. How do I take it to the next level? Right. Right. You know, where it's no longer me in all the different categories, it's other people. And how do we get those people where they need to be to work at, you know, right. max capacity. So, so 2019 for you is year, uh, three. Year three. Uh, and so 2020 uh, is for RB Oppenheim Associates for us is I think year 33, um, which is really interesting that, you know, we have these two different dynamics of, you know, a business that's very new and a, and a business that's been around for three decades. I love that. We didn't even talk about that. <laughs> right? We didn't talk about that aspect. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a really cool yeah, yeah. So, aspect because that again, it's going to go back to how we were talking about how this is going to be a different experience for both of us, and that's right. definitely a reason why. Yeah. So for me, you know, um, throughout really 2017, 2018, my podcasts and videos have all been about and and kind of centered on business growth and how are you going to grow your business and. So I've been talking about this and thinking about this for, um, you know, quite a while. And I think in the agency world, um, you know, I think we're in a huge transitional space right now because the agencies of the 80s and 90s and 2000s, I feel like there's disruption coming. Uh, and I think we've already started to see it. And so, you know, I'm thinking about it from sort of a personal level of, okay, how do I start to put my mind in a mindset that I can be open to and, and aware of uh, what it means to transition into, like you said, what is it? What what happens next? What what does it look like to go to the next level? Um, you know, in twenty nine or in twenty eighteen, uh, late twenty seventeen, I decided I was tired of my physical appearance and I wanted to make a change about it, and so. You know, I wanted a system that I could, that other people have already done. I didn't want to recreate the wheel. So I went with Nutrisystem. I lost 40 pounds. I feel great. 
you know, it's really changed the way I. A nice little plug for <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, for so, you know, I wanted something that was already proven that, you know, we could consider um, for digital ops and, and RV Op and I Associates as, you know, how can we prepare ourselves and, and, and how can we implement a system that's already proven to help businesses grow? without having to, you know, do it yourself because time is so busy. We're so busy. We're working with clients and we're trying to get deadlines and, you know, we can't just figure this out on our own. We need a system that's already in place. And so, you know, I knew that you're all about systems and processes. So if you've identified something good, it must be good. So I was very excited and, um, you know, I, I, I went out and immediately bought the book uh, and I bought the rocket fuel, the backup book. And oh, you another, did? Yeah, yeah. I have to read those. I'll steal those from you. <laughs> right, right. I think what, one other thing I was going to add that I like about it that was when I was listening to it was it's, it's designed to be a 12 to 18 month process. Mm. So it, I liked that it wasn't you have to implement everything now. Right. You know, it, it really breaks it up into chunks, manageable, mm. like that whole eat the elephant one bite at a time thing. And I was like, okay, that's that's reasonable. I have a, me a meeting with my leadership team, and we all we have to do at this leadership meeting is this task. Right. You know, and then and then we we go do those set these you know three goals and meet again, and and you just slowly do it rather than you know just that point. I, I needed to get away from that feeling of overwhelm, you know, got to do it now. You got to implement this whole system now. Like again, on top of your normal day to day right. client business, right. where do you fit that in? Yeah. You know? And so this just would seem to be very manageable. Right. To me. All right. Well, cool. So that's kind of why um, Katie decided to jump into the, the traction EOS, um, you know, as as a way to move forward. And so let's go ahead and kick it off. I think right off the bat in the introduction, um, you know, the things that really jumped out to me is is that over having worked with, you know, literally hundreds of companies that operate, whether it's from $2 million a year to $250 million a year, there was this sort of five core frustrations that businesses they, they, they hit these five frustrations and I thought it was interesting to kind of walk through. I connected with, you know, one particular thing, you connected with one particular thing. So, but then I also, like we said, like I see these other ones with clients every day, you know, where right, I, I can right. see those frustrations with my actual clients in, in these different areas. Right. So the five frustrations were lack of control, people, profit, hitting a ceiling and nothing's working. So of those five things, uh, tell me what, what you felt like. The one know. for me? Yeah. The one for me was lack of control. And it says you don't have enough control over your time. It also says the time, the market, and your company. But for me, it's the time. It's it's that there's this feeling of there's never enough time for everything. And, you know, how do I, how do I fit it all in? And um, so that's the one that resonated with me. How about you? I think it's the ceiling. And for me, the ceiling is that, you know, the, the growth has stopped or, or we've plateaued in a way, you know, I mean, if I look back and, you know, over the 33 years of our business, you know, we've seen peaks and valleys, we've gone through the recession of 20 uh, of 2008, 2009, and, and a lot of businesses hit, um, you know, that was that was a brutal time. It was one of the largest recessions that our economy has seen since 2019 or since uh, 1929 when the Great Depression. And, you know, it's compared to that. And so I think a lot of businesses like ours have struggled with the implications and ramifications of that time period. And so I feel like there's part of that that has kind of created the ceiling for us. Um, and I think that um, other businesses, you know, have their own things and they might connect with, uh, you know, some of the other points like, you know, other people might be frustrated with or businesses could be frustrated with the people trying to figure out, do I have the right person in the right place, um, you know, or or it's not just internal. It can be also like vendors or, you know, um, sort of ancillary people that you work with. Do you have the right pieces? Um, 
Another one I see just <clears throat> along that line is uh, culture. So we're oh, it's man, like and, yeah. and that's a really tough one to yeah. shift. So yeah. I've I've got a particular client I know um, who they they purchased the building uh, or they purchased the business and now they're you know they're they're they purchased a culture mm -hmm. you know a particular mindset with with the employees and so that that could definitely be one as well. Yeah, I think and I think too um, in the people part. Um, it's making sure that everyone is on the same page. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, when we work with clients and we're putting together a 12 month marketing plan that it's about them being able to use that plan to, to really get it out so that everyone in all the different departments and all the different, you know, whether it's sales or service, everyone is aware of, you know, here's our plan. This is what we're going through. And I think that was another piece for me that, you know, I wanted to spend time with our people in mapping out, you know, what that looked like. Um, and then I think the other thing, like profit. So profit, yeah. profit's definitely <laughs> one that, right? that I unfortunately see as problems with some of my clients. Right. Um, the, the nice thing is that we usually are able to come in and provide cost savings right off the bat mm -hmm. um, just from implementing, you know, cloud accounting software, which cuts down the administrative time for our clients. Um, but as well as just, you know, sometimes my clients will have, um, you know, bookkeepers. I've been there forever and they just have been doing things the same way forever. And no one's really questioned, why do we have this charge that hits every single month that mm -hmm. we don't use anymore? Right. Um, and so we're able to save, money there but you, profit and and I, I would add probably cash flow to that right. one as well just managing the cash flow which is just always an entrepreneur's you know yeah it was interesting we had a client come to us that said um, you know Michael we really feel like we're being outspent by the competition when it comes to digital marketing mm -hmm. and I said oh okay in the space that they're in it's very competitive and 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 there's a lot of dollars that are being invested um, but when we did our analysis, what we actually found was that there were some huge opportunities of, of the processes and the kind of creative and, and the way that the campaigns were set up that we found literally about 20% of their budget was being wasted because yeah. the, the campaigns were not set up correctly. Or targeting the right people. Right. Or, yeah. yeah. And, and literally that, that, that equates to thousands of dollars per month that are being wasted. So we were like, hey, if we adjust this, um, you know, your ads are going to be more effective, which again, that impacts the return on investment. Right, absolutely. Right. And then I I hope no one's in the nothing's working category. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> if nothing's working, definitely get this. Um, well, I, I, I think the one thing about um, nothing's working is, as the book kind of talks about, um, looking for a quick fix. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying, or trying trying this and hoping it'll happen really quick. Yeah, it, that, that, I mean, if I learned anything from being on Nutrisystem um, over the last year was it was about discipline, it was about hard work, it was about determination. There is no quick fix when you need to make serious changes when you want to make you know core, core, core level change. changes yeah core right. level changes right. it, it's it's not going to be a quick fix it's just not it's right not. it's taken you three years to get there it's taken me 33 years to get there so you know these things are are, are going to require an investment in time an investment in determination uh to get there all right, right. so we've talked about the five frustrations Lack of control, people, profit, a ceiling, nothing's working. Um, and I thought that was a great way for the book to kind of start off with the introduction of, okay, if you've dealt with these things, we have a solution for you. Right. And the solution that is, is really mapped out, um, and I think as businesses, you can get so overwhelmed with how are we going to get this ship on track and get it moving in the direction that they want. And I'm so excited about um, the way the author has kind of mapped this thing out and said, look, if you'll just focus on these six things, everything else needs to, will eventually either work its way into place or you'll realize I don't need to be thinking about that. Right. It's either in these six buckets or it's not. So those six buckets, those six core components are vision, 
people, data, issues, process, and traction. Yeah. Right? Um, so today, obviously, um, we have just a couple of minutes. We're going to just briefly kind of talk about those those six things, um, and then we're, we're going to kind of be ready to, to set up for next week, next Friday, yep. uh, episode two. Um, but real quick, when we talk about vision, people, data, issues, process, and traction, just at a top level for you, vision, what was the first kind of takeaway that as you're reading um, you thought about when when they started talking about that. The so vision is just all about what is your overall, you know, the mission statement, the vision statement, and and really ensuring that everybody on your team is on board and knows what it is, almost like it's automatic. Um, and so that's really what that one kind of talked about. It's it's what's the high level strategy, what's your plan, but then it broke it they broke it down into ten year five year, three year, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and so it's looking at, looking far ahead and then scaling it back five years, three years. Um, yeah, I think from a, a really practical level, um, you know, as marketers um, and as public um, relations professionals, we often talk to clients about being able to have what we call the elevator pitch in, in when you get on an elevator and you travel from the first floor to the second floor, you have 30 seconds. And in that time, are you able to articulate to someone standing next to you what you do, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think for me, um, because public relations and marketing and you know the digital space is so comprehensive and it covers so many different things, um, and we do so many different things for our clients, you know, I think for me that that vision was, OK, I get that this is what we do on a day to day. And these are all the very tactical and strategy things. But at the end of the day, do we literally have that that one thing that we can say, OK, at, at, at that top level, this is what I did. This is this is what we do. Right. And so so I think vision wise, um, I think that's sort of a good way or, or how I thought about it as I was reading through. Right. Um, all right, so people um, as a core component, what did, what did you think? So there? people is all about creating uh, what the book calls an accountability chart, which is different than an organizational chart, mm. and it gets into that, and I've found that that's been super helpful for us. Um, so it's the accountability chart that you create for your organization, and then getting the right people in the right seats. So that's really what he goes into, and then determining whether your people meet your core values or not, mm. and whether they're capable for the positions they're in. So yeah. just really kind of looking at, okay, here are the positions that we need, and here's who we have, and are they the right fits for everything? Right. You know, when I was reading this section about people, the thing that um, it, it didn't really specifically talk about um, or, or mention this, um, this phrase, but it, this is for us, I think, something that um, we've, we've been talking a lot about, and it does boil down to that individual. It's about self-awareness, <laughs> right? That, I mean, that's so, really what this whole process yeah, is about. Yeah, so if I understand that, you know, my tendency is to look at that 30,000 foot picture, but get maybe not as interested in some of the, you know, granular, you know, uh, you know, small details, but then I have someone else on my team, like Jesse Johnson, who is fantastic at those little granular details. She's a critical component to Absolutely. the team, right? She doesn't need, I don't need to force her to become a 30,000 foot view person. I need to make sure she's functioning in her strengths, you know, and then, you know, so yeah, so I think that, yes, having the right people in the right place who understand who they are. Right, right. Is so critical. And that, that yeah, and that you're matching their skill set with the position and right. what the position and what, expects. And what they have to do, right. right. Uh, okay, data is number three in sort of the core components. What did you think about in, as far as data? So data is all about actually looking at reports, <laughs> which uh, I have clients that don't ever look at reports. So, mm -hmm. um, and this is really just coming up with certain, they call them scorecards, mm -hmm. um, reports on a weekly basis, monthly basis, that is just really measuring um, some of the key processes in your business. Yeah, I think 
that you know when I when I look at data um, because you know in the digital space there's so much data um, I think that a lot of times that we look at data and we get lost in the numbers and we lose the humanity behind the numbers and the book kind of talks about that when it talks about you know when you're evaluating um, a, a person or a department. Um, you know, think about that person's skill sets and abilities, right, and, and how they're made up, um, because that's the information that's sort of behind the data that's really not in the black and white numbers. So I think it's good to have a balance of that when you're thinking and looking at the data. Um, and, and, and I think um, design thinking would be a, a very applicable um, sort of uh, lens to look through when you're looking at data. So design thinking is not about like visual layout and graphic component. Design thinking is more, you know, what are what are the human emotions? What are the human drivers behind that data? So yeah, your data could be saying that you know more people are are doing X, Y, and Z, um, and and then you're trying to unpack what that's what does that, that mean, right? right? Um, and What's behind that trend? Right, and and behind that trend is usually people. <laughs> right. So I think that was what something that kind of sparked my interest. And what I want to go into when we hit the, the chapter on data is really looking at that balance between not looking at anything, right? Mm. I don't want. I just don't want to know. Right. <laughs> you know, no fear. I, I don't even want to know. There's no way I made money this month. Right. To looking at it every single day, right? It's like going in and checking your kids' grades every hour, right? You gotta you gotta find that happy medium of mm. what's working that's steering the ship but not driving you crazy right so. all right so number four is issues issues come up in day to day when we run our business i think when i was looking at issues you know the thing that really just kind of popped up is um you know i've always been the kind of person that um i don't get intimidated when there's a big uh task at hand like a lot of people you know their house you know is just like a disaster and they're just like they get paralyzed and they're like, oh my gosh, I just don't even know where to start. And and I don't I don't have I don't operate that way. Mm -hmm. I, I know that that's the big thing that, that happens, but I usually just grab the first easy thing that I know I can do and I start with that and then I go to the next thing and then I go to the next thing, right? So that's kind of what I was thinking about with issues. And I think that what I'm hoping for and looking forward to is just helping my team be able to problem solve and not get paralyzed when right. the overwhelmingness of whatever the issue is is right. there. So I'm looking forward to that. What about you? Mine is developing a system for the most important issues to rise to the top. Priority. Um, yeah, because I, I am a, let me write this issue down on a sticky note and throw it in a folder, right? And then it so, goes into the abyss. Right, right. <laughs> and I need something that's going to capture what those issues are and have some kind of process where it's like, okay, which ones are the most important, you know, almost like a categorized because I'm certain there's a lot of issues that are arising because of one main issue. So sure. if you tackle that one, the others kind of fall away. Right. All right. Number next, number five is process in the core components uh, in establishing your EOS. Um, process you guys are so huge on process yeah process is my favorite one i just wish i had more time to do it so mm -hmm. process is just about documenting exactly what you do so that it can be re replicated and that's what allows you to scale mm. um but there's always going to be flaws in the process or you'll think of something else oh we should add that to the process mm -hmm. um and just you know what's what's the process to you know amend that and it's just uh that's one of my favorite things about yeah, I, I running think, a business. Yeah, process for me, I am I am keenly interested in the book talks about a very simple three-step process for documentation. And I think that's really probably what, what, what I'm most interested in because I know that there's a way that I do things, mm -hmm. right? And I've had a lot of success in, in doing it my way. But unfortunately, there's there's a gap between that knowledge transfer of what's in my head right. and, and how I do it with my hands to creating a, a documented process so that I can build scale into the business and let other people replicate what I exactly. do the way I do it. So right. I'm excited about that. Yeah. All 
All right, lastly is traction. Um, that's that's where we put everything into practice. Tell me what your thought takeaways were on traction. So traction is all, you can talk about these other five processes all day, but if you don't actually do it, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything. And so what traction is, is it, how, to, how to set up the meetings and how to set up what he calls rocks, which are the, the tasks that you assign to your team that need to be created or finished, completed mm -hmm. within a 90 day period in order to move to the next part of implementing this. And so that's really where you actually are able to implement everything from the other five categories. That's how I took it. Yeah. What about you? You know, I, I think the takeaway that I thought of just as I was reading it and thinking about how I view things, you know, I'm not 30,000 foot view person and I feel like traction is the application of taking the 30,000 foot and actually putting on the ground and having it have traction. Right. And going. Like it actually happens. Putting it in motion. The right. 30,000 foot in motion is, is traction for I me. I love it. So. Awesome, guys. All right. So that was our first episode. We're so excited. Thank you, Katie, for yeah. joining me. I'm looking forward to next Friday as we dive into Chapter 2. Um, We'd you know, love for you to buy it and yeah, join us. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't we didn't talk about um, there is a organizational oh, right. checkup that was in the uh, the end of chapter one, uh, which we had our teams go through, and it was really exciting. Maybe we'll we'll maybe talk we about can that. open with that next we'll, time. Yeah, great yes, idea. We'll, we'll open that. with that. So if you get the book, be sure to do the organizational checkup before next Friday. So we're going to be posting this video uh, on YouTube. So if you want to share it with team members, they can check it out. You can also um, go to rboa.com forward slash blog, and you can catch the blog post there, which we will have a link to the podcast. If you're a podcast person, you'll be able to listen to it on podcast. We hope that you'll subscribe. And at the end of the day, guys, why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want to grow our business in 2019. And we're all looking for a process that's proven uh, to yield results. And that's why we decided to choose Traction. And we're excited about those of you who are going to join us on this journey. Thank you so much again. My name is Michael Wynn. I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. We'll see you guys next Friday.